Hi, NMPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. This week it is from Analog Devices. And INPI is the segment where you get the new product introduction, I on NPI. That's what it stands for, early data. What, what do you is, learn? Maybe you learned something too. You learn something. What is okay. the uh, new product introduction of the week? This week. Okay, this week it's a chip from Analog Devices, which was acquired as part of the, when they got Maxim and they merged with Maxim. This is the Max, it's actually kind of a family of chips, right? But it, I'm going to feature the one that was featured, which is the Max 96714 series of uh, GMSL 1 or 2 to CSI 2 deserializer. And I basically was like, what is GMSL? I have never heard of this thing. Um, like I've heard of like, like there's DVI and HDMI and FPGA and like TCPAP, but what is GMSL? Um, well, GMSL is actually, you know, once I started looking to it, it's, it is, a, I think, a proprietary technology from Maxim now on devices, um, but it does solve a pretty important problem in engineering, which is um, you can't always use really long cables. So this is um, a two meter long CSI cable that we sell for um, the Raspberry Pi uh, 5 or 4. And, you know, the Raspberry Pi has this uh, camera serial interface that allows you to plug in one of their cool, like, high quality camera modules. And it comes with like, I think a 200 millimeter long uh, flex cable, but that might not be long enough. Like you, maybe you're like, I want to put the cable elsewhere. And um, you want the high speed and like native control of using CSI. You don't want to go through a USB port because now you need a high speed USB port and there's a limited throughput. And like, maybe you don't even have enough ports or whatever. You want to use the CSI interface on your device um, but you want it to be far away. So, you know, we sell this cable, but one of the warnings that we put on this cable is like, Hey, um, you cannot, you're not supposed to do two meters. Like CSI is really only good for like half a meter. And we do find that this works, but it's like really risky and super sketchy and hacky and we're super sketchy, hacky people. Um, but what if you are an engineer and you have to make like a real product? Well, um, the folks at, um, you know, Maxim were like, well, you know, we have transmitted high quality video over long distances. And we've done that since like the eighties. Um, if you remember, uh, uh, cable set top boxes. So these had a coax cable that would go in and inside there was a demodulator and it would like separate out the video channels, which would be digital. And you would be able to tune into any like 500 channels and your house, which contained the television, the set top box could be, hundreds and hundreds of feet from um, the drop point in, on your street that would also feed to like, you know, a couple hundred other houses. And so um, they're like, okay, let's be inspired by that idea. And instead of using these wide flex cables that have, you know, 15 or 20 um, conductors and so are also um, bulky and heavy and, and prone to damage because you have to make the wire so thin, let's use durable coax cable, the stuff that is, you know, you can get it in various thicknesses, especially if it's not carrying a lot of um, uh, power, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, you can go like hundreds and hundreds of meters without significant signal loss. You need like a good driver for them, but you can send a, a significant amount of data over um, a coax length because it's very uh, unsensitive to high frequency. It will, sorry, it will not, um, uh, you will not have distortion or signal loss of high frequency signals. So um, this is kind of how it works. You get two of these, you need a serializer and a deserializer, and they're sometimes called like Cerdes or something. Um, you have your 4K image sensor on the left, which has uh, a four channel differential signal using CSI, there's a couple of different files, there's I2C control, GPIO for you know, address selection or um, shutter control or whatever. Um, you also have a reference clock to drive the image sensor and then you use one of these Max 96 chips to serialize that data over a single line using either GMSL one or two or coax or single twisted pair over to the deserializer, which will then like magically unwrap the whole thing and give you back those uh, four uh, differential pair um, high speed signals, the clock, I squared C and GPIO. And like this works magically and seamlessly and the system on a chip other than the I2C control just thinks it's talking to your image sensor, but it's like very far away. Um, 
And this is how it works. Basically, well, there's a couple different modes. Um, there's like pixel mode and then there's this other mode. And I, the data sheet goes on for quite a while. I didn't want to like spend 10 minutes describing it. But basically it does this um, serialization where it takes the digital data and because it's the signals coming from the sensors digital and um, it packetizes it, um, sends the signal and it's bi-directional too, by the way, like it's sending video in one direction, but remember that I squared C data has to go back and forth. So there's a return channel as well. And um, it's really useful. Like, you know, the number one use is automotive because automotive you have, you, you really can't have, you want to have a lot of cameras. There's like the front facing camera, the back camera, maybe there's a camera for, um, there's multiple cameras for um, autopilot control, auto driving control. Um, sensing, and you can't have gigantic FPC cables running through your automotive. You will have to have something durable and thin. So coax is a perfect use case. Also, um, digital health, where you know you want to have, a, you know, the a camera at the edge of a um, tool, and but that signal has to go back through the thin tool that maybe gets inserted inside of you or goes down your throat, and then it goes into an image processor. Again, you don't want to have a 22-pin FPC cable going down your throat so they can look at your stomach. You want to make a nice thin cable. Um, that's where GMSL would be handy as well. You can also do coax and, um, sorry, uh, power over coax, which I thought was kind of neat. So it's not a bad idea, right? If you have this coax and it's thick enough, you can have the analog signal be the, the serial deserialized um, uh, encoded digital image data and then also have a DC voltage that would be used to uh, power the remote device. So you can have like, you know, just one cable for both data and power. And of course it has the return um, ground as the uh, power ground as well. And then um, there are two like protocols. There's GMSL1, GMSL2, and then there's, it goes, there's three and four coming out soon. Basically you get more and more bandwidth for each one. GMSL1 is three megabit, or sorry, three gigabits. Uh, GMSL2 is six gigabits. You choose whichever one you need. Um, the clock rate, how much bandwidth you have for the return as well will vary. Even though, again, we're talking about, I think this 96714, there's um, quad and dual uh, channel support, which means you're going to have multiple cameras for like stereo cameras. And of course, by the way, there's also the other way around. There's video. So you can have like, it's not just it's not just vision data going in, you can have vision data going out. So you can have this driving 4K monitors as well. Um, only thing is, I, you know, I started kind of looking like, well, is it like just transparent? It's like, well, you do have to do quite a bit of a configuration. Um, there's an uh, I2C interface, there's a pass-through mode, but also you do have to set up the chip itself or what kind of data it's going to be uh, transmitting. And it's not dynamic. You have to kind of like tell it, okay, I'm sending 4K data or I'm sending you know, you, YUV encoded or RGB encoded, you have to kind of give it an idea of what kind of data it's encoding um, so it can best use the bandwidth that's available. That said, there's not a lot of like pins, which I kind of like. It's like, you've got those signal levels, you got a couple of control lines, crystal power. And then, like I said, there's this, the signal out and the positive and negative. So you can have a differential. Um, it's quite compact, which means it's, you know, if you have an image sensor, you could have this on the back of the image sensor and it's not going to be, it's not some like eight by eight TQFP. It's, it's, a, it's a small QFN with only um, 32 pins. Routing it, uh, yeah, not, not trivial because of course you're dealing with six uh, gigabit per second signal. Especially if you're doing uh, DeFi, you have to have differential signaling, but you can, you know, if you have a four layer board, all your signals are gonna be at least on one layer, which is kind of nice. There's two modes you can use, either coax or twisted pair. Um, the twisted pair is a differential signal. I mean, depending on your, your setup for uh, where you want to pass the signal through, you can pick and choose. They have eval kits available uh, for each direction. They're not cheap, but they do work out of the box. Um, so you can get started with having signal go out, video come in. And what I thought was kind of neat is it says in stock, they have an adapter board for Raspberry Pis and Raspberry Pi cameras and other single board computers. So if you do want to use like your kind of standard single board computer like um, NVIDIA Jetson or Raspberry Pi or whatever, um, you can also pick up the 
HiCam eval board, which is an add-on. It doesn't, this doesn't include the serializer, you need the serializer. And then to control it, um, couldn't find any other example code, but there is a Linux driver and apparently it works. I saw somebody on the Raspberry Pi forum say like, I used it and I got it working. Um, even though they like, they bit banged the I squared C, but this will at least get you um, started with interfacing it. It's like, you don't need to use it with a single board computer. If you happen to have like, a just a crossover chip that has CSI or, or DSI and you want to use it, uh, you don't need Linux. You can configure it over I squared C. Um, check out the app note and uh, manual, which kind of goes through all the details of how to configure and set it up. And since stop. And stop. And not too expensive, like seven bucks for the serializer and maybe make another seven for the deserializer. That's a pretty good deal for like how much cabling it's going to save you. All right. For like a known good solution. For and Tom. that is this week's Eye on NPI. Eye on NPI.